Merry Christmas, Keisha. Merry Christmas, Emmett. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love the shy, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now today we're going to be talking about the shy season five, episode three. This is the recap. Now I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points in this episode. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. And what an episode. This episode was titled This Christmas, and we saw a lot of connections in this episode. Of course, we saw, you know, some elements from the movie The Preacher's Wife in this episode as well. Um, so what do you guys think about that? Now, I did like how they threw in your girl Layla Hathaway while they was playing This Christmas by her pops, Donnie Hathaway. Man, that was a special moment in my opinion. They threw that in there at the end of the episode. What do y'all think about Keisha and Emmett? Will it play out, you know, well for them or will something happen towards the end of the season your boy darnell said you know what i'm going to shoot my shot at jada i don't care if i get hit i'm going to continue to try to get my girl and that's exactly what he did by the end of the episode and is your girl jada making a mistake should she have listened to dre you know dre told her that darnell was not good for her in the last episode but in this episode she decided to make out with darnell i can't wait to see the conclusion of this whole little storyline but let's begin the recap. What did we see in episode three titled This Christmas? Now, the episode begins off with your boy Darnell shooting his shot, sending Jada some pics. And he's like, look, I'm trying to get my girl back. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do whatever it takes to get her back. I'm going to spice it up. And once Jada saw this picture, she could not hold her reaction in. It completely surprised her. She was not expecting this picture from Darnell. The man was talking about you ready to kiss what's under this mistletoe, right? And I'm looking like, okay, OG, he trying to get her back for real. And Sway was looking at Jada like, what you laughing about? Jada played this off smooth. She's like, look, it's just a meme or whatever. Nothing more, nothing less. Your boy Sway plotting and planning, you know, a trip for them to take. We know what your boy Sway trying to do. He is trying to prepare to propose to Jada, which at the end of the day, it ain't going to go down like that. Now, D-Ray has returned as Marshawn. Emmett, of course, is getting some advice from him. He is still on this whole 40-day challenge. And as of right now, he's doing what he got to do to complete the challenge. Now, Emmett, he wants EJ, all his sons, to be there on Christmas morning. He is telling Tiff that he wants EJ to continue to have both of his parents with him on Christmas and he's going to be having a get together and he wants her to come. Now Tiff tells him, yeah, that's cool. But Rob is going to be coming as well. If we do this, of course, Emmett, he didn't like it, but he says, you know what? So be it. You know what I'm saying? Make sure this dude respects my house. Now we get to Papa. They was doing this old NFT gift thing or whatever. And Papa gets the gift of the black sheep and Papa's upset with this. Now Kevin does tell him like, look, Look at it as you're different, you know, and you don't have to worry about blending in with the crowd. And this is exactly what your boy Papa will be going through this season. He's going to switch it up. His whole character, in my opinion, will be switched up a little bit as far as how he's going to be moving. And of course, not having to be like everyone else. Now, Kevin, he gets his little gift from Simone. And we know Kevin was paying attention to what Simone was reading. I believe she has a book by Octavia Butler. Kevin sees this, so later on in the episode when they go on that date, Kevin makes sure he gets her, you know, another book by the same author. And as of right now, Kevin does seem like he really likes Simone. We're going to see how it all plays out. And hopefully this time around, Kevin can have a healthy relationship with his girlfriend. Now we get to Trek and Tracy, and apparently it's a chance that they may not have enough food or enough gifts for the people that's going to be coming, they say a prayer, just hoping that everything goes good, you know, with this whole event, right? And this prayer was answered because your boy Duda has decided to donate. He's making sure he is black Santa Claus, right? Bringing in gifts, donating. I mean, the dude, he is really trying to, you know, fix things up. And Tracy liking this, you know what I'm saying? She liking, you know, the things that Duda is doing. Your boy Treg ain't feeling it at all because he's like, look, 
I don't know if we should be taking anything from this dude just based on how dude has been moving. Treg ain't feeling it, but Tracy, she backing dude up. She's making sure that Treg is going to accept these gifts or whatever, and everything's going to be good. So I guess this was, you know, the miracle that Duda was supposed to be given to the community that we read about in the description of this episode. And Duda does tell Treg he has to hurry up and make his mind up when it comes to that decision on running for city council. Now, Kevin is telling Jake that he thinks he's in love with Simone. Of course, Kevin tells Jake to make sure you stay away from this one. But Jake does mention that he has his own things going on with Gemma. And y'all know that whole storyline is going to blow up eventually. Then we get to Lene. And of course, she wants to see her brother Jamal. We know what Jamal did um, in season four. He caught a body, y'all. He caught a body and we ain't seen him since. She's just hoping that she will be able to see him this Christmas. Now, Treg is having a conversation with Duda. He's telling him like, look. He don't know if he wants to do this. He does not want to, want to run on a lie. But Duda is telling him to follow the narrative. This will be good. Of course, his niece is there. She is trying to push for Treg to do this as well. At the end of the day, I believe Treg is feeling a lot of pressure. He's feeling a lot of pressure to do this. He, deep down inside, probably doesn't want to do it. But as we learned in the past, Treg has pretty much told us if he doesn't do it, everyone fails. His mom, Peaches, she comes in there and she tells Treg that she's very proud of him. You know, how he's changed his character, the things that he has done and, you know, what he's done for Jake. She loves it, right? So Treg, of course, he feels that pressure from her. Like, man, if I don't do this, you know, I'm going to let her down as well. And, you know, this is what I'm talking about. This is the pressure that I'm talking about that Treg is feeling. So he signs the contract. He's going to decide to do this. As I told y'all, this man signed that contract like Tupac signed the contract to death row. And as you can see, Duda is in all red, just like Suge Knight. Is this going to be a mistake for Treg down the line? Hopefully not. Hopefully he has a better outcome when it's all said and done. But as I told you guys, when you're doing business with Duda, at least from what we've been seeing the entire season, just think about all the people that's been connected to him and think about how it ended. I don't know about this, y'all. I just don't have that, you know, good feeling that this is all going to work out. But hopefully it does. Then we get to Tiffany and Keisha. We saw this scene earlier on in the week. I broke it down for you guys. Tiffany is telling Keisha that, you know, Emmy's is going to have to get over it. You know what I'm saying? As far as this whole relationship, we know that the divorce is final. They're 100% single. And your girl, Keisha, she is telling Tiffany, like, look, how would you feel if Emmett was to move on with someone else? Of course, Tiffany is telling her she probably would not even care. Now, come on. We know Tiffany going to care when she finds out about Emmett and Keisha. She going to have a different reaction when that truth comes to light, right? And her and Keisha's friendship is going to be completely different. I don't see how it's going to work out, but we're going to see how they want to play this whole storyline out when it comes to his end. Um, we know that Keisha and Emmett will be kicking it this episode at the same time. We know that Tiffany and Rob, they're going to be going on their date, having some bonding time. Now, we get to Kevin and he wants to make sure Lene gets a great Christmas gift. And he is telling Trey, like, look, is it a way you can get Jamal back or whatever? How you talk to him? Now, Treg at first says he don't know what he can do. He don't think he can get him back or whatever. But he tells Kevin he's going to reach out and see, you know, what he can do and look out for him. Now, Kevin was geeked. He was geeked to the max. I'm looking like, Kevin, don't get too happy. Don't get too happy because it may not happen. And we know it definitely didn't happen in this episode. Now, we get to your boy Papa. He is trying to apologize to the people once again about what he's done in the past. Um, of course, he takes another L. I knew he was going to drop that chicken. I'm looking like, dude, you need to make sure you got a grip on that chicken. He drops it on IG. He's live. And of course, your boy Bakari, he walks up. He tells him like, dude, like, here you go again. On top of that, people was already dogging out Papa in the comments on the IG live video that he was doing. Now, him and Bakari will be going outside to get their smoke on. And of course, Bakari, he's going to give Papa some advice. Now, Jada finds the ring that your boy Swade has hidden. Of course, we know Swade, he wants to propose. He is trying to really cuff 
Jada. And this is a problem. This is a huge problem because we know Jada, she ain't really trying to take this relationship to that level. She understands it is still some issues within this relationship. But deep down inside, we know Jada, she has feelings for Darnell. So when it's all said and done, this whole thing between Jada and Sway probably could never work out as far as long term. Now, Keisha and Emmett, they're having single parent bonding time. We know it is a struggle being a single parent, right? Emmett is over there struggling, trying to manage all these boys. Keisha understands this. She's looking at him and in her head, she's already decided that she's going to go over there and help him out, you know, with handling all the kids, right? But she doesn't tell him this. She's going to make it a surprise. And Keisha, she slides out quick. She was trying to slide out the door quick without anybody noticing but the parents they notice right and they're telling Keisha where you're going make sure you send the location whenever you get there whatever but Keisha she was on a mission she was on a mission to get to Emmett and have some good old holiday Christmas time right now we get to Rob and Tiff they're on their date and once again we're having conversations about what Rob wants now we do find out more about Rob and his family he talks about how he's pretty much the black sheep of the family you know people don't like some of the things that he does. So he goes his own way. You know, he makes up his own rules. He's not, you know, like the typical person. But we know that Tiffany, when it's all said and done, she ain't trying to be tied down. So once again, Rob explains to her, like, look, I'm a traditional dude. I want a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. No other people are involved. And of course, Tiffany feels some type of way about that talking about are you judging me on what I you know believe in and what I've done in the past Rob he ain't like that he's not really trying to judge he is just telling Keisha exactly what he wants right and he wants Keisha to tell him exactly what she wants he's not trying to play around so Keisha if you want to be in a real relationship one-on-one -on -one, this is what Rob wants but if you want to go out there and do what you've been doing if as you guys have been stating want to be for the streets then go ahead and get a pushing you know what i'm saying because that's what it seems like it really seems like tiff ain't trying to be tied down she wants to continue to do what she's been doing and if that is the case i don't see how this whole relationship is going to work out you guys let me know down below but we're definitely going to talk more about tiff and rob in this video now kevin and simone they're out there on their date and at first it was kind of awkward but then, you know, they kind of got comfortable when they start talking. Kevin does get her a gift and he got her a gift, that book by the same author that she was reading um, earlier on in this episode, I believe Octavia Butler. So Kevin is paying close attention to your girl, Simone, and it really does seem like he likes her. Now, we get to Jada. She is talking about how she believes Suede is going to propose to her. Of course, they tell her, so what you going to do in do you still have feelings for Darnell, right? Then the conversation turns into what Tracy wants. And Tracy, deep down inside, is in love with Duda. She wants to be with him for real. And Tracy pretty much tells them, like, look, I feel safe around Duda. Now, I don't know about y'all, but feel safe around Duda? Like, really? All the stuff that this dude is involved in and you feel safe around Duda? All right, well, we're going to see how this whole season ends. But as I told you guys earlier, the people that get close to Duda, nine times out of ten, they end up getting hurt, getting dropped off. It's just not going to end well. I mean, Tracy, just think about it. Think about the things that your boy Duda has been a part of. Think about Q. Think about the 63rd Street mob. You want to be around that? Think about your son, Jason. Think about what happened to him. As Q has stated, Duda is for the streets. And if Tracy does decide to really be a part of this man's life, she best to be ready for those consequences of someone like Duda. Because politics or not, Duda, he's bad news. Now, that's just my opinion. We know Duda is trying to change some things, but that street mentality, being in the streets is something that he can't get rid of. And I believe it's going to continue to come out of him. We're going to continue to see the same old Duda when it's all said and done. But hey, this is what Tracy wants. This is the person she feels like she is safe around. So as I said before, I want you guys to let me know, how do you see this whole thing playing out with Tracy and Duda? Then we get to your boy Suede and he goes through Jada's tablet. He wants to know who she's been texting. He ain't believing, you know, that meme that she was talking about was true. 
So he finds out about the text that Darnell sent and this pisses Suede off and you already know he's going to go and confront Darnell later on in the episode. Now we get to Emmett and Keisha. She has decided to surprise him. He's happy. He's like, man, this is why I love you, right? Because Keisha, she understood that Emmett needed some help. We know Emmett was taking care of all his boys, you know, on Christmas Eve. At the same time, he is trying to wrap presents, decorate, and get everything together for the get-together tomorrow. And it's a lot. So Keisha decides to come up there and, you know, help him out. She understands that he needed that help. And once she does help him, Emmett does tell Keisha that she's a blessing, right? And once again, we can see the chemistry between the two. And your boy Emmett, he doesn't even have to ask Keisha for anything. She just knows based off, you know, his needs and the things that they talk about. As I told you guys, this will continue to grow. We know later on in the episode, they're going to act out on those emotions that they have for each other. Then we get to Tiffany and Rob. And Tiffany, she's asking Rob, like, why is the Christmas tree already decorated? Rob is pretty much paid someone to decorate everything. And Tiffany, she's like, that's a time for family to bond. You know, we're supposed to do that together. And Rob, he's trying to take a pretty much take the easy way out. That's not something that he does. He just wants to come home and chill. Tiffany does tell him that next year they will decorate. They're not going to be getting somebody to do it. So Rob was happy. Like, OK, so you are agreeing to be with me. And, you know, we want to kick it next year for Christmas. They end up making out, having a good old time. I did notice once they did go into Rob's spot, Rob told Tiffany, look, just take my lead or whatever. I'm going to drive. You just follow. So we're going to see how that all plays out. At the end of the day, Rob, he does put out his requirements, the things that he wants. Tiffany, she has the choice to agree with them or disagree. So we're going to see how this whole relationship goes between the two. As of right now, they do have small little issues, but it seems like they're trying to work through them. Then we get to Suede and Darnell, and Sway has decided to approach Darnell. Instead of having a conversation with Jada, like he probably should have had, in my opinion, he goes to Darnell and takes out his frustrations on him. And he pretty much hits Darnell right in the face. Now, Darnell was not expecting this at all. I'm looking like, man, he gonna hit the OG out of nowhere? Of course, Darnell was pissed off, and Suede is talking about, you know, I seen the picture and all that stuff. He went through Jada's tablet. He's asking Darnell, does he still love Jada? And Darnell's like, yeah, I do still love her. I loved her ever since I saw her back in high school. And Suede is like, so, I mean, it's too late. You messed up. Like, what the hell did, did you do back in the day? Like, why did you treat her that way? Of course, Darnell tells him, like, look, I was young. You know, I had to grow up. I made a lot of mistakes. But now we know that Darnell, at least from what he is saying, he is ready. So at the end of the day, your boy Sway talking about it's too late. Darnell was right. He said, look, that's not up to you. You know what I'm saying? Jada is the one that's going to have to make that decision. Just like Jada is the one that you should have talked to instead of going over there, hitting the OG in his face. Now, Darnell had me cracking up talking about if you did not catch me off guard, I would have knocked you into next week. At the end of the day, we know Darnell, he don't care what Sway did. He's going to continue to shoot his shot at Jada because when it's all said and done, he really wants to be with her. Then we get back to Keisha and Emmett. Your boy Emmett is talking about Merry Christmas. Of course, he is appreciative of what Keisha has done coming over there, helping him out. The two end up having a moment. This is what I've been talking about. They end up kissing and it seems like it's probably going to be more to this down the line. Your boy Emmett and his 40 day challenge. As of right now, he is still doing a good job because I was like, man, this man may mess around and end up breaking that challenge. It may be over. You know what I'm saying? He may end up clapping these cheeks. We know eventually that's probably what's going to happen because we know Emmett and Keisha, they got a history. And at the end of the day, it's a history that can never be erased. And it's a chemistry that can never be erased. And the things that they have to me, it's always felt stronger than what him and Tiffany have. But that's just my opinion on that. But you can tell Keisha was happy, you know, after the event of her and Emmett. And your boy Emmett was in his feelings like, man, you know what I'm saying? I really wish she could have stayed. We know this is going to be a very, very interesting storyline. I cannot wait until Tiffany finds out about this. 
Then we get to a little cut scene where we see, you know, some love in everybody's life. We know that your girl Tracy, she wants to be with Duda for real. And that's exactly where she's going to end up going. We see Rob and your girl Tiffany looking like they're having a good old time smoking one. I mean, at the end of the day, they might as well cherish the good moments that they're having. Your boy Darnell, he's looking through the high school yearbook. And of course, he is looking at Jada's page and y'all know he reminiscing. Your boy Darnell reminiscing like, man, I let this one get away. I ain't about to sit up here and take this punch. I'm going to go for my girl. And that's exactly what your boy Darnell did by the end of the episode. Now we get to your boy Duda and y'all already know what Duda doing. He is clapping those cheeks. Once again, him and Tracy, they get in there on and Duda having a hell of a night. I mean, I guess this is a hell of a Christmas gift for him, right? Now, also, we see from this body language some issues in the air. Swade and Jada, they definitely having issues. This whole relationship, it ain't working. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely not working. And I'm glad that Jada did, you know, talk about this with Swade later on in the episode. But it definitely needs to be talked about. Now, we get to your boy Papa and Bakari. They go outside. They smoking. Of course, Bakari is telling him, you pretty much is getting dogged out. He knows this. We know that Papa is always trying to be the good person, whatever. And he cares about how other people feel about him. Bakari is telling him, like, look, you would do better in life if you stop, you know, giving a damn about what people think about you. How about you go that route instead? And I think Papa is probably going to take his advice. So I cannot wait to see the aftermath of this storyline and also, you know, Bakari's influence on Papa. I do believe that Treg and Rashad, they're going to help Bakari get his mind right because as of right now, that kid is still all over the place and he needs someone to help, you know, get him right. Then we see Peaches, we see Jake. We know that his mom's is here for this Christmas, right? And it's been a long time coming because we know Peaches, she was not in the best of health in the past and it seems like everybody is watching the movie the preacher's wife like i said this episode has elements of that movie throughout the episode you guys let me know down below exactly what things you saw in this episode that you know they took from the preacher's wife now we see your boy treg with tiara and as of right now it does seem like he's going along with this plan i say this he might as well take the benefits of this whole fake relationship and go ahead and hook up with Tierra. clap those cheeks if you got to I mean it's a lie anyway so it ain't like y'all gonna take it serious so go ahead and have fun while you can now we get to Tiff and Rob your boy Rob doesn't really seem like he put a lot of thought into his gift right I guess he thought buying Tiff some expensive gifts that would have been enough she would have been happy but no Tiff she wants gifts with thought in them and this is probably what Emmett would do. You know, Emmett probably would have got her a gift that she probably would have appreciated more. Now, Rob says he's going to fix this the next time around. He learned from this. Tiff does get him the black sheep. And as of right now, it does seem like they're having, you know, a solid little relationship. But as I told you guys, it's some issues in that whole deal. And I got a feeling it's not going to end well. Now, we get to your boy Darnell. He has decided to shoot his shot of course, Jada is like, what the hell happened to your face? Like, what happened to you? Of course, Darnell tells her some fool, you know, sucker punched him. Now, Darnell does tell Jada, like, look, he loved her, right? And he has always loved her. He just didn't know how to love her properly. We know he was young. He made some mistakes. And he said he is very serious. Jada asked him, how serious are you? He says, well, I'm as, as serious as this earpiece that I always wear. So we know Darnell is for real about this. You know what I'm saying? This is something that he's been praying on. And, you know, hopefully it does work out for the two. So we're going to see. Then we get to your boy Rashad. And, of course, he's having a good old time. Your boy Rashad been having a solid season. He's staying out of trouble. He seems more happier, especially with this new love interest. And we know he ended up getting her like a cassette tape that he made with songs and stuff on there that he had to record. So he put a lot of thought and time into this gift, right? And she tells him this is probably one of the best thought out gifts that she has ever received. And it seems like everything is going well for, you know, Rashad and um, Deja. And we know she does get him a new outfit. She's going to have your boy Rashad out there fresh. I can't wait to see it. It does state that she's going to help, you know, fix up some things about Rashad and maybe he needs this. You know what I'm saying? A healthy relationship with someone that actually cares for you. 
that's a good deal for him in my opinion. Then we get to Duda and Tracy. And of course, this time of the year is tough for Tracy because of her losing Jason and she needs to get through it. Now, Duda tells her, look, we're gonna create some more new memories for you. It's gonna be okay. So as of right now, Duda is there for Tracy, but I told you guys, I still don't see this whole storyline playing out between the two. I just got a feeling that it's not going to end well. Now we get to Jada and Sway. She's finally addressed the whole ring that she found. She knew that Sway was going to try to propose to her. Now Jada does tell Sway that she thinks that they should not rush into this, especially since they're in a rut or whatever. And of course, Sway was upset. Like, that's what you think. At the end of the day, we knew this was not going to play out the way Sway wanted it to play out because Jada, deep down inside, she has, you know, real feelings for Darnell. And that's who she always wanted to be with. But we know they had a past and, you know, things happened back in the day. But as of right now, it seems like, you know, maybe it can finally be fixed. But we're going to find out exactly if that's going to be the case between Jada and Darnell. But Sway was in his feelings, y'all. I mean, he was upset. He really wanted to be with her. He grabbed his ring and said, you know what? I got to get up out of here. So what do y'all think about that? Do y'all believe that Jada is making the right decision? Then we get to Duda and Tracy and they're having a preacher's wife moment. As I told you guys earlier, how do y'all see this whole thing playing out between the two? I don't think it's going to be, you know, a good result when it's all said and done. Now, also, we see Rob and Tiff. They come over to Emmett's spot and Emmett, he has decided to be mature. He said, you know what? I'm cool. Rob does give him a gift or whatever. And they kept it cool. No issues, no drama. Now, Tiff did notice that the house was all decorated. It looked real nice and stuff like that. She does ask Emmett, like, so you didn't do this all by yourself. Who helped you? And Emmett does tell her he has somebody, but he didn't tell her who it was by or whatever. So you already know that's going to be something they're going to continue to build. I cannot wait to see the conclusion of it. Keisha and Emmett is something that the fans have been talking about for a very, very long time. And then we get to Dre's special friend, a special guest, Layla Hathaway. Now, this was a very interesting scene. It wasn't that long, but, you know, they was playing her father's record this Christmas. We know that was by Donnie Hathaway. So it was very interesting for them to have his daughter in this particular episode while they was playing his record. Now, your boy Kevin decides to tell Lene her gift is here. And I'm looking like, man, Kevin. You don't even know if Treg was able to get Jamal to come in the first place. So why would you even say anything? At least wait to see what Treg is talking about. But no, Kevin decides to tell her. So now they all go up front thinking that Jamal is going to come there. But no, Treg comes in. He says, look, he tried to reach out to Jamal, but apparently the boys got to Jamal first and he is pretty much locked up awaiting a murder trial we know what your boy jamal did last season he caught a body and now it seems like he may be going down for that body right Lene is upset we know in this next episode is going to be some issues with her you know her housing and everything like that but i think dre may be able to fix those things but as of right now and they're looking too good for your girl Lene. we know that kevin felt some type of way about that because he really wanted to make sure Lene had a good christmas but it did not go the way that he planned it to go now we get to darnell he has decided to come to the little you know get together that emmett threw and darnell he does ask jada like where your boy at of course jada tells him look he ain't no boy we talking about suede, of course. And Dom, she wasn't even in the episode. I thought she was going to be in this episode. Maybe we'll see her later on um, down the line. Now we see the mistletoe and then we get the kiss from Darnell and Jada. So all that work your boy Darnell has been putting in, all those little, you know, flirting, you know, tricks that he's been doing, it's paid off. And him and Jada, they made out. They having a hell of a Christmas. Of course, Emmett was like, what the hell is y'all doing? But... He was happy for real. He took the picture and, you know, he's like, look, my parents back together. If these two can get back together, you know what I'm saying? His love life can definitely be fixed. And most likely him and Keisha, they going to be good. Now, you know, he had to send this picture to Keisha talking about, look at this. And, you know, we know Emmett told Keisha he wished that she could be there with him. Right. And this is where Keisha tells him, maybe one day I will. So most likely. It could be a possibility that Keisha and Emmett can make this 100% official 
And if Tiffany does have some issues with that, that's on her. She's going to have to just have some issues with it. At the end of the day, I told you guys, I believe the friendship that Keisha and Tiffany they got right now, it's probably going to be over. It's going to be some changes for sure, in my opinion. You guys let me know what you think about that. And also, what do you think about the episode? Episode three titled This Christmas, we've seen a lot of inspirations from the preacher's wife. And I told you guys, they kind of did the same thing with the Love Jones episode that they did last season. They used elements from that movie and they used it in the storylines of Keisha and Christian and of course, Tiffany and Emmett. So it seems like they like that theme. You know, I want to know what they're going to do next as far as a themed out episode. You guys let me know. Do y'all like these themed out, you know, episodes that's inspired by, by movies and stuff like that? It's cool to me because it makes me go back and rewatch some of those movies that some of these episodes are inspired by. And I go back and watch them and I see, you know, a lot of the elements that they use out of those movies. So, but I'm definitely going to go back and watch The Preacher's Wife to see all the different details that they had in that movie and that was used in this episode. But you guys let me know, man, what do you think about episode three? We will be breaking down the episode four trailer, giving you guys that episode four what to expect video very soon. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys once again for all the love, all the support, and I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.